please use the raise hand function on your Zoom and you'll be asked to momentarily unmute your microphone. And as a reminder, please have your first, last name and affiliation displayed in your display name if you wish to ask a question. And the first question, we'll start off with Chris Harris from WSMV TV. Hi, Ryan, how are you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing well, how about yourself? Good, good to see you. I just wanna know what this year has been like for you, given how things you know, ended in Tennessee and you were injured and you'd been here for six years and now you're playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's been a, it's been an amazing year. Um, very blessed to be here, obviously. Uh, you know, some of the things I went through last year in Tennessee it was really difficult. It was certainly some adversity. Um, anytime you try to come back from an injury and um, you know you don't come back the way that you want to, uh, it can be frustrating. And I think that through that, probably one of the the cool things of that is that uh, oftentimes in my life or in football, uh, when you go through some adversity, a lot of times you grow as a person. And uh, it's something where I think it's helped mature me as a person. I think I've grown in my faith through that. Um, and it's been amazing just to see how the Lord has, uh, has healed me and has brought me to a, a great situation here in Tampa and allowed me to, to work with a lot of great teammates and a lot of great coaches. And um, to have an opportunity to be here is just something I'm very grateful for. Next up, we'll go to David Kloninger with the Post and Courier. Hey, Ryan. Good to talk to you again. How you doing? Yeah, hey, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Not bad. Uh, how strange is it that you're a South Carolina guy and Bradley's a Clemson guy and you're teaming up to try to win a Super Bowl? Yeah, I tell you what, Bradley had a uh, Clemson shirt on today. And I said, man, Bradley, I love you. That's an ugly shirt, buddy. And uh, anyway, it's, you know, Bradley's a, Bradley's a really close friend of mine. And um, he's a great teammate. He's a great man. And um, certainly we have our Carolina Clemson differences, but it's something that, um, you know, it, in all honesty, we kind of have fun with it. And um, I, I'm really blessed to work with a guy like Bradley. He's a great teammate, someone I'm really thankful for. Next, we'll go to Corey Spector with WJPZ FM. Hey, Ryan. Um, you know, I'm curious. I, I know your background of, uh, you know, you got into kicking field goals in high school when your uh, soccer coach convinced you. How cool would it be if when kids were five or six years old, they'd start kicking field goals right away? <laughs> well, I can tell you it is pretty cool because I have a five-year-old little boy, and that's about all that he wants to do. Um, so he's uh, he's all in. He it's I, I don't press it on him at all. Uh, honestly, I just try to let him do whatever he wants, and he, that boy is into football, and he loves kicking the football. So uh, it's been kind of fun for me as a dad to see a little five-year-old boy get so excited about um, – not only our team having success, he's all fired up about the Super Bowl, but it's also really cool seeing him have fun. We have some neighbors that live right down the street uh, that are some really good friends of ours. They have an older boy it's a, that he actually plays for the Atlanta Falcons. His dad plays for the Falcons. It's Luke Stocker, and uh, his little boy's a couple years older than my son, and those two just go out in the yard and have a ball, and they play, and they play, and they kick, and they punt, and they throw. And as a dad, it's just pretty special seeing your son enjoy the game. So um, pretty cool to see. Next, we'll go to Blair Toed with the BBC. Hi, so I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. The first being, how exciting is it to not only, I mean, be in the Super Bowl, but be playing against your former team, the Chiefs? Mm -hmm. And also, for you to be in Tampa Bay and to be working with this coaching staff, working with this amazing roster, how exciting is it for you? And what have you seen? I mean, you've played so many other years with other teams. What's the difference with this team and this coaching staff? Yeah, so uh, obviously it's a it's a tremendous honor to to play in the Super Bowl. That's something that you dream about ever since you start playing football. So uh, very very thankful for that opportunity. Um, you know, it'll be neat to get to play against my former team. I still have some some friends on that team that um, that I'm close with, and I still know some of the coaches. And so um, you know, I had a great experience in Kansas City. Um, I had a great first five years of my career there. I'm very thankful for that time. And um, it'll be good to it'll be good to see some of those guys. And then you know, as far as being here in Tampa Bay. Um, you know, it, this has been an amazing situation. Uh, it's, it's been awesome to come to work every day with um, so many great teammates and great coaches. And to see the success that we've had on the field this year, um, you know, it makes you really happy for everyone in the building because uh, there's so many people, even a lot of people that probably don't stand up here and do interviews, but uh, just from our strength staff to our coaching staff, to people in the kitchen, to um, really everyone in the building, players, Coaches, I mean, everyone, there's just a, a great group of people down here. And so uh, it's really cool to see everyone in the building getting rewarded with a, with a chance to go play in the Super Bowl and a chance to win the Super Bowl. So it's something that I'm just really excited about, and I feel uh, really honored to be, be here in Tampa. 
Next, we'll go to Kellis Robinette of the Kansas City Star. Hey, Ryan, uh, can you just uh, share some fond memories you have about Kansas City? What are what are some things that stick out to you about your time here? Yeah, I would say that um, number one is the people. Um, obviously, some of my best friends were on that team, you know, guys like Dustin Colquitt and uh, Frank Zombo and Eric Fisher and Anthony Sherman and um, – you know, Terrence Copper, just guys that I played with over the years that are, are just phenomenal people. So I think number one is the people. And secondly, you know, the, the fans, we, um, my wife and I, we loved our time in Kansas city. Um, we actually still have a house in, in Kansas city and, um, you know, we, uh, we, we love it there. And, uh, you know, we love our time there, I should say. And, um, you know, Arrowhead is obviously a, a special place and there's a lot of great tradition there. Um, and there's just a lot of great people um, in the in the Midwest and in Kansas City in general. So uh, for me, I'd say the number one thing that stood out is, is the people. Next will be Lou Bezjack with the state newspaper. Ryan, just uh, take me through your journey. I mean, the, being taken last in the draft in 2010 and still um, still in the league and now getting to play at Super Bowl, just uh, do you think uh, when you were picked, uh, then to be still playing in the league now and how special is Sunday going to be for you? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been an amazing 12 years for me. Um, you know, for me, I think that, uh, or I don't think I know, um, you know, the Lord has blessed my career and he's blessed my career in ways that I really never could have imagined, not just for the longevity of it, but, uh, for the people that he's allowed me to play with and, uh, the relationships that I've been able to build and, um, just the people that have poured into me over my 12 years in this league. Uh, I feel very blessed to be in that situation and, um, you know, all glory to God for, for allowing me to, to experience this. Um, and Sunday will be, be really special to after 12 years, this will be my first time um, getting to play in the big game. And so uh, it's something that I, I feel very blessed to be able to do. Next we'll go to Evan Schenker with the back sports page. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good. So what does it mean to be able to kick on your home field in Tampa, knowing the weather, not having to travel? And a lot of people make a, a big deal out of home field advantage. But for kicking, it seems that that would be a, a huge advantage for you. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's, it's something that, um, you know, obviously, it, and it sounds like we're going to have some weather on Sunday. I mean, it looks like we could have some high winds. Uh, it looks like we could have some rain. Um, and so, you know, that's something that, um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of windy games this year. Um, haven't had too many rain games. So uh, that's just something that we'll do our best to be prepared for. And uh, it's something that, uh, you know, we hopefully we'll be able to handle those elements and handle those conditions really well. Um, that's what we work for. And hopefully we'll be able to go out and do that. Next up, we'll go to Teresa Walker. Ryan, you mentioned uh, how God's kind of had his hand on you over the last few months, but, you know, the Titans cut you last March uh, after, you know, being on and off the IR list the, 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 the season before, and then the Bucks don't sign you until September. Uh, how did you kind of work through those months uh, to make sure you were ready when somebody called to be ready for that moment? And how tough were those months? So, yeah, interestingly enough, I, I kind of referenced earlier that my son likes to go down the street and play with his buddy. So, one of my really close friends, Luke Stocker, in Nashville, they live a couple houses down from us in Nashville. And obviously, he was a former teammate of mine with the Titans, and he now plays for the Falcons. Well, uh, obviously, I got released in March. And when I did, um, you know, all the gyms and everything were closed. Well, Luke had a gym in his garage. And so starting about mid-March, our wives would get together. They would go work out first. We would watch the kids. And then when they got done, <laughs> we would swap. And Luke and I would go work out where, while our wives watched all the kids. And so – um, getting a train with Luke was something that was a blessing. You know, he's, uh, he was, he was just great. We kind of fed off each other. I think we encouraged each other working out, training together. And to be honest with you, I think that the time, um, kind of being able to do it, have that time away where I didn't feel like I needed to be ready to kick in May or June. I think that was something that was probably a blessing for me. And so having that time away while it was hard in the sense that, wait a minute, I'm not on a team. I've been on a team every year for the last 11 or 12 years. Uh, that part of it maybe was a little bit odd, but um, actually having the time away where I could really train, really get my body right the way that I wanted to, um, and then to work with a guy like Luke is something that um, that was awesome, and that was a blessing. So um, I, I th kind of thought the time away was good, and then uh, having the opportunity to come down here right before the season started was uh, was awesome. We'll go to Alec Lace with First Class Fatherhood. 
Hey, Ryan, what's new? My show focuses on fatherhood and family life. I, I believe you got one and one and one on the way here. Are you guys going to find out what you have? Or like, a, you know, kick a ball and see if it blows up blue or pink? And what are what are the top values that you're hoping to instill in your kids growing up? Yeah, we, uh, we're we really blessed. We have a have a five-year-old little boy, two-year-old little girl, and another uh, another baby on the way. So the, I love the idea of kicking the football, but I always told my wife, I said, I would love to wait. And she's such a planner that she's like, there's no way we're waiting on the first two. But she always said, if we have one of each and we have a, we're have we pregnant with a third, that she would consider waiting. And so uh, we are not finding out. So we, uh, we have, I don't know, 12, 13 more weeks to go here. Babies do um, this spring, and we don't know what we're having. So uh, looking forward to that surprise. And uh, as far as instilling values, I think, um, first of all, let me just say, I, I love what you're doing. I think that um, we need more dads. We need more dads in, in this country and in this world. And um, that's something, man, I can, I can get behind your cause. I love that. So um, grateful to hear what you're doing. I think as far as values I want to instill in my children, uh, there's a lot, man. There's a lot of uh, values. I think my faith is something that has really shaped me. That would be the first thing. Uh, it would be my Christian faith. And then secondly, I think just to treat people kindly, uh, to be kind to people, uh, to love one another. And, um, you know, there, there, there's a lot of values, but I would say those are the, those are the three that come to mind uh, when you first ask me. Next question will come from Austin from the Fully Loaded podcast. How you doing, Ryan? Hey, I'm doing well. How about you? Good. Okay. Uh, I asked Harrison Bucker the same question, but do you have any uh, superstitions or pregame rituals that you, you go through uh, before you either go out to the field and make a kick or um, before the game? Uh, not really. I'm, I'm not very, uh, I'm not like a superstitious person or everything or anything like that. I always, you know, I shoot my tech, my wife a text um, before every game and, you know, just tell her I love her and to give our kids a hug for me. Um, and you know, before every kick, I think one of the things I always do, honestly, is I'm just, uh, on the sideline, I always pray for peace and I just pray for the Lord to give me peace to go out there and, um, and be free and, and not to worry about the, uh, stress of the game or the, the stressful moments or anything like that. Lord, just give me peace and help me to go out there, um, and, and do what you've given me the ability to do. So I would say those are the two things that I do. Next up, we'll go to Josh McKinney. Hey, Ryan, Josh McKinney, Hickory Daily Record. Uh, we're very proud of you for going to the Super Bowl. Just talk about what it means to uh, represent Hickory and, and Hickory High School in the Super Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate your question. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, I feel a ton of support from uh, a lot of my friends and family that are in the Hickory area, and um, it's it's really cool and special to be able to, to represent Hickory uh, in the in the Super Bowl, so uh, it's something that I'm I'm excited about. Obviously, have a lot of fond memories growing up and uh, playing at Hickory High, and that's where where all of this got started. And um, it'll be it'll be really special on Sunday um, to hear from a lot of my friends and family uh, from Hickory. So, uh, looking forward to being able to represent them, and hopefully, we can we can go out there and get a win for everybody um, in that part of the state. Next up, we'll go to Diego Dupont. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Hey, I'm well. How are you? Thanks. Congratulations to, to be part of this match. My question is how about you feel to play against your first team and your teammates have the confidence to play another game than the last November match? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, we, we had kind of hit on that earlier. It would be exciting to, to get to play against, um, you know, the Chiefs. It's a team where I, where I started my career and I have a lot of fond memories of Kansas City. and. Um, was able to develop a lot of great friendships there. And so I'm looking forward to seeing some of those guys that are still playing from, from when I was there. Um, and then, you know, as far as our confidence from when we played them earlier in the season, you know, I think that um, I think our team has come a long way and uh, we've continued to grow and we've continued to get better as a team. And um, obviously, I think the Chiefs have done the same. So it should be a great game. and something that we're really looking forward to. Next, we'll go to Joshua Peck from the Daily Star. Hi, Ryan. I've seen you uh, used to play soccer in your younger days. Do you, are you still interested in soccer? Do you still pay attention? And, and if so, who do you support? Yeah, I, I grew up uh, obviously playing soccer and uh, loved the game. I thought that uh, it's one, I think it's one of the greatest games out there. And, um, you know, the other thing I love about soccer is I feel like it helps you with every other sport that you play. You know, soccer was one of the first sports I played. And then as I got into basketball or baseball or football or whatever it was, 
uh, it seemed like it helped translate and, and helped you to pick up those sports as well. Um, and as far as being a fan, you know, I, I'm not a huge, uh, I, I don't get into the club soccer very much. I'm not a huge fan of it. I do love watching the World Cup. So uh, every four years, I love watching the World Cup. I think that's one of the greatest uh, sporting events that we have uh, in the world. And uh, I love, uh, I love pulling for the USA if, if they're in it. Next question will come from Paul Kaharski. Hey, Ryan, good to see you. Uh, hey, I hope you could go back to, to last year a little bit. I know you've talked about it. Um, just how much was the injury? Uh, talk me through both stages of the injury, coming out of camp and, and then your, your trial run, I guess, during the season with the setback. And then what was it like just kind of to watch uh, uh, and be part of, of, of a kicking season like that? Um, with things going so sideways, it must be really gratifying now to come out of it and be going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, no question. Um, you know, last year was a difficult year, and um, you know, it was something that you have an injury and you work really hard to come back from, and uh, it, you know, it just didn't go the way that I wanted it to. And uh, you know, as I kind of referenced earlier, I think that uh, looking back on it, uh, it was crazy because when I was going through it, it was so frustrating and um, it was difficult, and it's just not at all what you want. Uh, as an athlete and as a competitor. Um, but when you look back on it, you know, I, I think about that time in my life and it, I, I think that it has grown me a ton as a person. I think that it has grown me in my faith. It's grown me uh, as a man. And I think that adversity does that to us. I think that, uh, I think that God sometimes puts adversity in our lives because he wants us to grow and he wants to mold us. And I think that's something that I really learned through that, through that time last year. Um, and, you know, certainly, whether I was playing or whether I was on IR and not being able to play, you know, you want to be out there with your teammates and you want to be helping the team win. And so when you're not able to do that, it's really difficult. Um, and, you know, as far as looking forward to this year, um, you know, one of the things when I ended the season on IR and was away from the game for a little bit, you know, in February, March, that time, uh, it makes you realize how much you love the game and how much you miss uh, playing the game. And so for me to, um, to be able to come back and, um, you know, just the way the Lord has blessed this season. It's probably one of the best seasons I've ever had. And um, it's just been really, really gratifying. And it's something that has, I think, grown my faith um, over this time, just to know that, um, man, God is good. He's going to allow us to go through some difficult things. But uh, when we keep our eyes on him, uh, things are going to work out. And it's been really special uh, just seeing how this season has gone and uh, something I'm just really, really grateful for. Next up, we'll go to Chris Harris with WSMV TV. Hey, Ryan, just to kind of follow up on that, how will you think of your your six years in Tennessee kicking with the Titans professionally? Yeah, I had a great uh, I had a great time in Tennessee. Um, you know, five of the first six years uh, went really, really, really well. Uh, the last year was difficult, uh, but uh, the first five years that I had were were amazing and. Um, it was amazing. The, the same thing, the same experience that I had in, in Kansas City, I had in Tennessee. You know, I, my wife and I, we call Nashville home. We, we love Nashville. Uh, we built a house there a couple of years ago. My kids are in school there. And, um, you know, we have a lot of great friends in Nashville. And a lot of those friends are from the Titans. A lot of those guys are still playing for the Titans. And, uh, you know, guys like Ben Jones and Brett Kern. And, you know, our families are really close. And those are guys that I'm just really grateful for uh, to have in my life. I think we'll be friends. We'll be friends for the rest of our life. And, uh, you know, those guys are I think they're excited for us and they're they're looking forward to us playing on Sunday and then getting back to Nashville and hopefully getting out and getting our families together and playing some golf together and just doing the things that we love. So um, had a ton of respect for my time in Tennessee, uh, made a lot of great friendships. Uh, the, the Titans fans were awesome. They've been so good to my family. I still feel and hear a ton of support from Titans fans, whether it be on social media or just reaching out through text or whatever it may be. Um, you know, we, we were really grateful for the people in Nashville, the people in Tennessee. And um, that's, like I said, it's home for us right now. And, um, you know, we, we love that community. Next up, we have Steve Isbitz with JoeBucksFan.com. Hi, Ryan. Two uh, quick questions. Uh, if there is any difference at all kicking in the south end zone or the north end zone at Raymond James Stadium, could you please describe what that is? And um, uh, the other question would be, um, well, I'll, I'll skip that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, obviously when I came to Tampa, I heard a lot about the south end zone. Um, and so it seems like the wind can be a little bit trickier down there. Uh, this year has been interesting. We've had a lot of north winds. 
uh, which I'm not certain from the, my conversations with other guys. Again, I've only been here for maybe five months. So um, there's probably other guys you can ask, but it's, I think that's a little bit odd that we have, we've had so many games where we've had a North wind. And so I think that's a little different than uh, some other years, but um, you know, the thing about our stadium is it's open-ended on both sides. And so uh, wind is a factor in our stadium uh, and particularly playing down here in Tampa, we have a lot of games where we have to deal with a lot of wind. Uh, and it looks like Sunday might be the same, just looking at the, the, the five or six day forecast. Um, so hopefully we'll be prepared for that. That's something that we, uh, we take into account. We try to do the best we can in pregame to, to gauge it as best we can. And then um, sometimes you just have to go out there and, and trust what you think the wind is doing and uh, put a good swing on it. Next, we'll go to Nate Wimberly with WBTV. Hey, what's up, man? How are you, Nate? Hey, congratulations. Um, going back to your Hickory High days, um, Kicking at Barger Stadium, could you have ever imagined that one day you would be playing and kicking in the Super Bowl? And what's one of your most memorable wins as a Hickory High Red Tornado? Yeah, as far as uh, growing up in Hickory, you know, I, I probably never imagined playing in the Super Bowl. It's something that maybe you dream about and you watch the Super Bowl and you sit there and go, man, that would be so cool. But you, it doesn't really feel like a reality or something that would be possible. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty amazing that that's going to happen this week. Um, something I'm very grateful for, um, you know, as far as a memory, I, I remember when we played Burns one year and, uh, it was probably maybe 2003 or 2004, somewhere in there. And I remember they had a really good team. And, um, I, I remember that they, uh, they were going to spike the ball to, or to kill the clock and, and kick a field goal with, with not much time left. And I think the quarterback took a knee. And I think we ended up winning the game. And uh, that's just a game that we always talk about. They were a great – Burns was a great team that year. We won, and uh, that was a pretty special moment. Next over to Tom Rock with Newsday. Ryan, I was wondering, uh, from a kicking perspective, what's it like to have a coach whose motto is no risk it, no biscuit? Uh, does, that seems to leave you on the sideline quite a, quite a few times. You know what? It's been it's been great uh, to get to get to play for Coach Arians this year. Um, man, he has been uh, he's been awesome, and it's he's someone that you know I think all the players really really respect. Uh, he's had a ton of success in this league, and so he's someone that we trust and the guys trust. It's it's uh, it's his decision when to send us out there or when to go for it. And uh, my job is just to be ready for uh, for whenever I whenever my number is called, and um, that's uh, that's just how I try to approach that. Next, we'll go to Doug Kayed with NESN. Hey, Ryan. Uh, what, when was the first time that you actually met Tom Brady? And what was that interaction like? And then also, how much time did you actually get to spend with Tom this season, uh, given the, the COVID protocols and everything? Yeah, uh, the first time I met him, I, I imagine it would have been the first week that I got here. Um, you know, Tom has been great. He's a tremendous leader. It's been an awesome to get a chance to play with, you know, the greatest player that's ever played this game. And uh, to be able to call him a teammate is something that I think we are all really, really grateful for, really thankful for. And, um, you know, he's been, he's been awesome. He's been a tremendous leader. And, um, you know, as far as how much time have I had with him, you know, not a ton. Um, you know, obviously we you see each other at practice or, uh, you know, you may have interactions here or there throughout the day. Um, but, you know, COVID's a different year. We're, we're not all huddled up around a table. We, eating lunch together or anything like that, you know, like maybe we would be in, in prior years. So um, don't have a ton of time with him, but the interactions that I have had have been uh, been really positive. He does a great job of making everyone feel important. Uh, he's really, really nice to everybody, really kind. And uh, I just, I really respect how he treats people with so much respect. It's uh, it's cool to see someone in his position take the time to, to make everyone around him feel important. Next we'll go to Carlos Santos with Culture Sports. Hi, Ryan. I know um, the Tampa Bay Bucks uh, have had issues with their kickers for the past few years. How does it make you feel that they finally found one and, you know, they can rely on you to try to win the games uh, when it comes to, you know, kicking a field goal, field goal? Yeah, you know, as far as, as things in previous years, you know, I, I wasn't here for that, so I really don't have uh, much to say on that. Uh, the one thing that I will say is that you know, I work with a bunch of great guys, and I'm grateful for guys like Zach Trenner and Bradley Pinion, my snapper and my holder. Um, 
you know, those guys do such a fantastic job that they really make my job a lot easier. And so uh, I'm just grateful that I get to go to work with, with guys like that each and every week. And um, as good as they are on the field, it's uh, they're even better men off the field. And so um, that's something that I'm really thankful for, uh, really grateful for those guys and uh, just very appreciative of them. We have time for a couple more questions. Next, we'll go to Mark Topkin with the Tampa Bay Times. Hey, Ryan, two uh, unrelated questions for you. One is uh, just how does Bruce Arians at 68 relate to this, this young, the young, obviously there's some older guys on the team like Tom, but a lot of young guys on the team. And then secondly, uh, what kind of kicking surface uh, did you find Raymond James to be? You know, that, that stadium, that grass, I mean, new grass, but the surface, the look, uh, just kind of how do you scope that out? Yeah, so to start on B.A., um, you know, obviously, B.A. has been a coach in this league for a long time, so he has no issue relating to guys. I mean, he does a great job with that. Um, he, you know, I really respect the way that he coaches. It's, um, it, he, he's very to the point. He has us focused, and, and we know exactly what we need to do every week, and so uh, a ton of credit to him, and, and you know, it's been, it's been an honor to get to play for him, and as far as the, the service at Raymond James, um, you know, obviously we have a lot out, we have outdoor games. So we have weather, uh, we have, you know, there's sometimes there's bowl games and stuff like that on our field. Um, but you know what, all in all, I feel like um, our guys here, they really work hard trying to keep the field in, in great shape. And um, it's, it's been great to get out there and play uh, and be able to play on natural grass, not natural grass all season. So uh, those guys do a great job and uh, they're, I'm very appreciative of their efforts because uh, I know it's not a, not an easy, not an easy task. We'll go to Santiago Tomasi with NFL Chile. Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thanks, Mr. Zukop. Uh, you played for Coach Reed one year. What's the difference between him and Arians about the special teams? Uh, p- pardon me, what's the difference between him and, and what? Uh, him, because Coach Reed and Coach Arians, uh, according to special teams. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? They're obviously both great coaches. Uh, it's been it's been great to be able to play for both of them. And um, you know, when it comes to special teams, they both put an emphasis on special teams, and uh, I think they both realize how important uh, the special teams are to the game. And so they both do a great job uh, making sure that everyone's ready to go each and every week, and uh, making sure that we know exactly what we need to do to be successful. And um, you know, they both, like I said, put a lot of emphasis on special teams. They realize the importance of it. Next up, we'll go to Joshua Allen with Bucks Report. Hey, Ryan, how are we doing? Hey, good. How are you? Not sure if you're aware of the urban legend of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers kicker, um, but it's been very difficult to solidify uh, a, a kicker in that position. And you've came in and you've really took control over it. Um, you've been very accurate. You haven't had many misses. Um, you've had some blocks, but that's not that's not all on your fault. What's it been like to really bring solidity and solidify this position for this team? Yeah, you know what? It's been uh, this has been an awesome year. Uh, it's it's been a ton of fun to to get to play with these guys that we do. And um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, a ton of credit needs to be given uh, to Zach and Bradley. You know, Zach Trenner, Bradley came in our snapper and holder, and the and the big guys up front. You know, protected for me, blocking for me. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into to making kicks. And so I give a ton of credit to them. Those are guys that I'm really grateful for. I get to work with them. They do a great job. They take a ton of pride in it. And um, collectively, I think that we've all, uh, we, the three of us have really been able to, to come together. You know, they, they welcomed me quickly when I got here um, the first week of September. Uh, they made me feel right at home. And, um, you know, I think we've been able to develop some chemistry really quickly. And that's something that uh, I don't take for granted because that's not always the case in this league. And so, to get to work with guys like that has been awesome. Um, and as, as I referenced earlier, you know, they're phenomenal at what they do on the field. Uh, phenomenal. And, and as good as they are on the field, they're even better men off the field. And so those are the kind of guys that you want to go to work with. And, uh, man, they're, they're great friends of mine. Where I think we're a really close, tight-knit group. And it's something that, uh, you know, I thank God for every day that I get to come in and, and work with guys like that because that's, that's really a blessing. And the last question here will go to Steve Isbitz with JoeBucksFan.com. Hey, Ryan, I wanted to ask you about your kicking coach. Was it sort of strange being a veteran kicker with uh, uh, Coach Armstrong says you have very distinct and strict um, routines to come in and have a kicking coach? Did you have to sort of be careful to not maybe listen too much to him? And does he sort of stay hands off with you? How does that relationship go? 
Yeah, you know, I, I think it's been a great uh, a great relationship working with Bones. And, and obviously our whole room, you know, uh, Coach Armstrong, Tandy, uh, Chris Bonio, you know, all of us and, and Bradley, Zach, myself, um, I think it's been a, been a really good relationship. I think we've all worked really well together this year. And um, I think that, uh, you know, as far as the specifics to the kicking coach, you know, I think Bones does a great job of just adding little tidbits here or there, whether it's things with the field or whether it's making sure that our op times are where we want them to be or whether it's, um, you know, just different little things that uh, he does a really good job paying attention to. And a lot of times those little things add up and they can make a big difference. And so, um, you know, I'm grateful for for all the coaches that we have here. And I really like our room a lot. Um, it's something that uh, has just been a, been a great fit all around. All right, that's all the time we've got today. That'll conclude today's media availability session with Tampa Bay Buccaneers kicker Ryan Suckup. Ryan, we appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me on.